afternoon section. If you have the node, you can see the disappearing, disappearing mission. Look at the, somebody read for me Second Timothy chapter four, verse one and two. Second Timothy, yeah, chapter two, sorry, chapter four, verse one and two. Because I forget the yeah, please read for me. Yeah. Um, so it's chapter four, verses one to two. In yeah. the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, <coughs> and in view of His appearing and His kingdom, I give you this charge: preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Okay, can you hold it? The scripture. Actually, this is uh, the letter from Apostle Paul to Timothy in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and dead in the view of appearing in his kingdom. I give you what? This what? Charge. What does mean this charge? This responsibility. Yeah, it's like the commandment. You have to do it. Yeah, it's a, not just a suggestion. You have to do it. And what can you do it? Preach the word. Preach the word when? In season and out of season. What do you mean? Any time. And especially, can you see the correct rebuke, encourage? Yeah. Yeah, if you your own Bible, you can underline correct rebuke, encourage with a great patience and careful instruction. You can see the correct rebuke. And if you look at uh, 1 Timothy, you can hold it. 1 Timothy chapter. Sorry. Sorry, Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen. Yeah, just uh, one chapter before. Yeah, one Second Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen. All Scripture is what God's breath, and is useful for what teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Can you see the four things? What is number one? Teaching. Number two, rebuking. Number three, correcting. Number four, training. training. But can you see that? And verse two, preach the word in what? In season and out of season. In, in correct and rebuke. And what is the two things common? Correct and, correct and rebuking. Do you know, correct and rebuking is in people they don't like. Yeah? When you preach the gospel on the street, when you correct and rebuke, people are upset. <laughs> Do you understand? But the, of course, oh, the word of God teaching is okay. Rebuke correcting not okay. Training training is okay. But unfortunately, the people they don't like the correcting and rebuke. And um, sometimes, two times, I say, repent your sins for the kingdom of God is at hand. I not often to against the LGBTQ on the street. Why? If you say uh, about the LGBTQ in uh, outside the street, what will happen? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's, a, it's still we have the freedom of speech. You can speak. I saw one one guy, one of one of a uh, preacher. He preaching here against the homosexual because the Holy Spirit spoke to him very clearly. Speak. When you speak, within within two minutes, four ladies from all direction, the four English ladies, they are look like a very genuine. Look like a, some then a middle class these ladies they come and attack how dare you against uh, these homosexual blah 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 oh shouting can you imagine mm. on the street when you speak to against the uh, homosexual lgbtq people are not very happy yeah but that's because the mainstream media is pushing it yeah they're pushing the agenda yeah. black lives matter mm. You know, know yeah. <coughs> Not only black lives matter, every lives matter, yeah. White, yellow, everybody, yeah. But um, unfortunately, you know, we live in the evil world, evil world. But never give up to telling the truth. A few days ago, I was preaching the these teenager girls. Do you know, three, three girls. Do you know what they say? We are lesbian. They are gays, they say. 
And do you know what they do? In front of me, they kiss each other. <laughs> These three girls, I said, repent, <laughs> repent, <laughs> they run away. <laughs> I think uh, our sister Lydia gave the leaflet, and a young boy, black boy, teenager boy, gave the condom. Can you imagine? Where was that? Here? Yeah, a few weeks ago. And they look like the exchange, give the leaflet and the <laughs> condom. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, please let me know. If somebody give you a condom, please, I'm going to come and then not kill them, and then I, I can then, I'm going to attack them by the word of the law. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but look, I give you this charge. Preach the word, prepare your seed and I order seed. What? Correct, rebuke, and encourage with a great patience and careful instruction. Encourage. Encourage is very, very important also. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> Okay, who wanna need the uh, no, note for me? Yeah. yeah. Can you need a note for me? Not yeah. only, yeah. yeah. Not only are we lessened by the mystic in faith, we are less in the missions or outreach activities than last century. But interestingly, most of the smallest churches are having the greatest impact. Most churches have uh, that have small memberships seem to grow closer together and its union with the members give them a greater sense of being the body of Christ. And what does the body of what does Christ's body do? Someday Jesus will say to the saints, For I was hungry and gave me and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. You know, Matthew twenty five, thirty five to thirty six is very important because of this word of Jesus. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you beat me. That is a prison ministry, and then um, in the hospital ministry, and the welfare ministry, you can see all of them. You know, I met uh, one guy, uh, Linton, brother Daniel, you saw him, that guy, in front of uh, the Morrison, just oh, yeah, one hour ago. Right. Yeah. He used to live in here. Yeah. How long was he in there for? Uh, three years ago, two years ago, he, long about long. a short time, not very long. Too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And uh, when you stay here, do you know what he say? Pastor Paul, I never ever sleep like this. He slept very well when he stay in here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when somebody have uh, some addiction problem, they cannot stay here. They run away, mm -hmm. and then they join the. What but was his name? Linton. Linton. And so uh, the street pastors know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He used to stay here. Very sad. Yeah, and then he's still begging on the street just now. I offer him to or would like have lunch together, but he didn't. Yeah, that's true. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah right. normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if please don't give the money for drug and alcohol. Yeah. If you give the money, what will happen? Spend it on they they become more strong drug addict and alcohol. Yeah. Therefore, you supporting for them to drug more. Yeah. Drug yeah. Alcohol. yeah. Never give the money, please. You know, when somebody say to me, hungry, I used to live in the near the Stratum, that area. One guy, <coughs> he's English guy, he wear the suit. And he always come to me, can I have the 50 pence? He didn't say one pound or two pounds. He always looking for 50 pence. I say, why? He said, I'm hungry. I say to him, from, from where he stay and to my house, within three minutes walking this, very close, I can see my house. I say to him, because you're hungry, I'll give you very nice food. Come with me. He's just looking for 50 pence mm. because we're hungry. Let's go. He just followed me around um, 100 meters. And he said, oh, I'm OK, I'm OK, I need to go away. He didn't follow me. So he's, not He's not hungry. No. <laughs> you see, he just uh, tension only for money. Mm -hmm. When you get the money, for what? alcohol and cigarette and drug or all, all kind of these things therefore don't give the money if you give the money you supporting for them to become more terrible drug addict alcoholic never give the money also is a common you need to know common way to collect the money from people my mother died yesterday but i need uh, i need to buy the ticket to go to my mother's house I said, how much? He said, 27 pounds to buy the ticket. <laughs> and then, can I have 30 pounds, something, whatever. They're lying. 
Then 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 their mother died, grandmother died, and then my uncle died, and then they speak like this. They just looking for money for drugs, and um, I know all this the thing area. But um, as you are training as a missionary, eh? when you see all these vulnerable people, you can supporting for them. I still remember Mr. Peter is a Scottish guy. He, he was alcoholic. And uh, he stayed with me for around uh, six months. In alcohol, like six months, he stopped drinking and stopped smoking. But still, he something happening. After six months, he, I was looking for him. He left. I was wondering. But two days later, what was happening? We lost the printer and computer. We lost everything from our office. Mm. Nobody knows. I report to the police. And then around the two weeks later, police uh, called me and uh, even I received the letter from court. We found the thief, the burglar, who was stealing your printer, computer, everything. I didn't know who. I realized Mr. Peter, the Scottish man. He was okay, he's six months, and when he drunk, what happened? He come and then he needed the money to steal. Broke the window. Anyway, the, the court asked me to come as a witness. And I was so busy at the time, I sent a letter to them. No, I can't, I can't attend the, the court as a witness. You know what they say? If you attend the court, we're going to pay you eight pounds per hour, they say that. Even expensive of my travel journey. And then they say to me, they always try to sort out problem by money in <laughs> this country. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me to go there and then to be uh, my witness, what God say to me. And then I went to the court by 10 o'clock in the morning. When I went to the court, and then I saw Peter. He was uh, the one to steal everything. And then, you know, according to the, my, my witness, uh, yeah, he go to prison or release on that day. And then the judge asked me, what religion are you? I said, I'm a Christian. I'm a minister in the church. And one guy who are walking the uh, court, they give the they bring the Bible. I touch the Bible, I shall speak the truth. I tell him the truth that they uh, confess. Because of, if they are if they are Muslim, they touch the Quran because I'm Christian. And then I speak. They ask him many questions and I answer everything. And then around the 10, 15 minutes later and then I lift up my hand. You are, you know, within this seat is the front, behind the, the on the left side, the judge in there. I leap up my hand and judge say, yeah, whatever you like, you can say. Holy Spirit, God spoke to me in the morning, I will receive the glory in this court, in that court. God spoke to me. And when I leap up my hand and then they say, yes, judge say to me, what do you want to say? And I stood up. I say, I know Mr. Peter. He's my family, he's my brother. They're wondering, because different color. <laughs> White, Scottish, and then Korean, and then poor family. They're wondering. Do you know, as I'm witness, whatever I say, they need to write down. The, mm. Do you understand? Witness, they write down. Then some, uh, the, how can you call it? The court? Uh, uh, Tapping everything. Yeah, they tap it all. In everything, the because of my witness. And uh, everybody wondering why he said he's um, his family. And I say, because Jesus died on the cross for his sins and my sins, and he accepted the Lord Jesus as his personal savior. His father is my father. Same father. They like everything. Same father. <laughs> father. <laughs> it's very interesting. I speak in the court and about the Peter is my family. His father is same my father. And I told them, he's free. And Jesus forgive him, also I forgive him. Oh, so powerful. When I say to them, and Jesus forgive him, I forgive him. Also Jesus forgive my sins. Then I talk about the forgiveness in the court. They type it right down. Oh, Jesus forgive, oh, he's sin. And then, it's a, can you imagine inside the court, it look like a church. I'm like standing in front of the pulpit. And then, and then I say to them, don't against him, against the alcohol. Because when you drink alcohol and then damage it, and they broke the window, I still. They write down, don't against <laughs> Mr. Peter against alcohol. 
and uh, he's my family she just loves him and then he set him free and then I say to the judge she just loves you you write down she just loves me <laughs> 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 I, I spoke everything oh goodness it look like uh, you know authority the government uh, gave me the power to speak as a witness and then you know when I say something in the church they don't write down everything but in court they write down everything can you write down I know you write down. <laughs> amazing and the you know, atmosphere change there is a prosecutor and some police in there people they smiling and uh, in the court do you know the atmosphere in the court is very strict and uh, very sorrow and tension and um, very serious everybody no smile but when I say Jesus loves you God bless you if you give your life to Jesus you have eternal life can you imagine I have the power to give the message of Lord Jesus in the court they'll write down everything if you believe in Jesus you have eternal life they'll write down you know you don't write down in here but they, <laughs> they'll write down in the court and I left guess what Shepherd? five in the afternoon somebody knocked the door when I open the door Mr. Peter release he look at he was tears he's learning he said Pastor Paul, thank you. I said, don't say to me thank you. Say thank you, Jesus. Oh, I still remember. I hurt with him. There is a power of a forgiveness, brother Daniel. Power of forgiveness. And then um, I helped the most vulnerable people. And then they still, our computer, printer, all these things, I forgive them. And then good news is, uh, as God spoke to me early in the morning that, that, that day, I received the glory and honor. And God is the glory in the court. It's not wonderful. You know, I'm a missionary. Wherever I go, I preach the gospel. Do you know, Book of uh, Act, uh, Apostle Paul preaching in front of King Agrippa. King Agrippa said to Paul, You tried to convince me to become a Christian? What Paul say? Do you know that, that scripture? And he wants all of the people listening to become Christians. Yeah, become like me, accept that this is a chain. Yeah. Paul say. King Agrippa, listen to me. Not only you, everybody who listen to me, everyone become like me. Accept this chain. Paul encouraged the congregation. Even look at the one Corinthians chapter eleven. You know what Paul say? One Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. You know Paul encouraged the congregation like this. Yeah, one Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. Yeah, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Yeah, follow my example as I follow the example of Lord Jesus. Imitate me as I imitate the Lord Jesus. Do you know my prayer for all you guys? You become like me, and then you know, except my have eaten hearing eating problem. <laughs> yeah, every all of you, anybody watching, you know, you can become like me, and then live for Jesus. You know, brother, what brother Daniel gave me the, my nickname, what kind of battery? Duracell. Duracell. <laughs> that battery is not from me, the recharge of no, the uh, Holy Spirit battery. <laughs> Holy, do you know that when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you receive the power, yeah? How, how many of you experience when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you don't have uh, any more tidiness? Where is Do you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, tidiness is gone. Where is gone? Very strong. Yeah, very strong. Therefore, you know, you're a missionary, uh, share the goodness of Lord Jesus. For anybody, anybody, your neighbor. Yeah, who gonna lead for me? The saint will be so involved in serving Christ. Should I read? Yeah, please, yeah. The saints will be so involved in serving Christ that they won't even see it as serving Christ. Matthew 25, 37 to 39. But that's just how Jesus sees it. Matthew 25, 40. These are areas that God has appointed us to walk in beforehand. Ephesians 2, 10. These are all personal missions every believer is called to, just as it is to love the members of Christ's body. Love is how everyone will know who his disciples are. It won't be by our theology, biblical knowledge, or apologetics. It will be by our love for one another that people will know we are Christ's disciples. 
in John 13, 34 to 35. So loving one another is also a missionary activity. Yeah. Can you love one another? Yeah. Amen. If you love one another, you know. Yeah. Can you keep it? Uh, can you look at the scripture? You can write down on your note. 1 John chapter 4. One of my favorite chapters is uh, 1 John chapter 4 about the love. How many books written by Apostle John in the, in the New Testament? How many? Sorry. How many books he, he written John. in New Testament? Uh, three, four, five. Five. Can you tell us? Um, it's John. Yeah. <coughs> and then John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, yes. and Revelation. Thank you very much. How about the Luke? How many books he written? Luke. He was a medical, medical doctor. Was Which book is it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Actor Luke. How many books written by Apostle Paul? Do you know Apostle Paul? You know, how many books in New Testament? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Do you know in the theologian they discussion about uh, who is the author of uh, uh, Hebrew, and then uh, if uh, Apostle Paul is the uh, author of uh, book of Hebrew. He written the 14 books, 14. which is uh, more than half, mm -hmm. more than half of the New Testament written by Apostle Paul. Look at the 1 John chapter 4. <coughs> Somebody read for me 1 John chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 16. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Yeah. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. Mm. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. You see? God is love. Do you believe that God is love? Yeah. <coughs> One of my friend, he's over 50 years old man, but he is studying the, he is studying the Church of England in a BA course. <laughs> B.A. course is a three years course, is very difficult. He write down the essay about Trinity. God is love. Yeah, God is love. About the Trinity. God is love. Do you know, if you say God is love, that means you need some uh, other party. Yeah? Do you understand? Love means I need somebody yeah, to express all my love. Therefore, God is love means there is a trinity. <laughs> God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in the beginning. We can see that God is love. He write down that essay. <coughs> God is love, yeah? If who, whoever lives in love lives in who, lives in whom? Lives in God, yeah. Yeah, God in him. In the same way, the love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. I like verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love dry out the fear because the fear has to do with the punishment. The one who fear is not made perfect in love. Can I ask something? If a gangster come to you, can you love them? Can you stop to fear? Yes. How? Well, we can look past what the fact that he's a gangster. Yeah. And we can see his heart. Yeah, see his heart. God okay. Loves him. So Thank you. We must love him. Yeah, very good answer. For me, I can explain to you according to my my way how I overcome the fear. I used to meet a gangster. Even gangster came to me with a knife and uh, some weapon to try to attack me. Do you know what I saw? I don't see these gangsters. I saw the lost ship. Mm. I saw the lost soul. Yeah. Do you understand? Therefore, I have a compassion. I have a, you know, pity on them. Because I compassion for them, I don't scare I don't fear. For me, if I met, uh, if I, even if I met a uh, prime minister, if I met a uh, multi-billionaire, do you think it's a, 
Dinner, I'm a little bit, you know, low service team, and they are so, no, why? I can see them, they are like a lost soul. If they are born again, wonderful, they are my family. Do you understand? If a multi-billionaire came to me, yeah, I can see not as a multi-millionaire, billionaire. I can see them as just one soul. If they are not born, born again, I can see them as a lost soul. Therefore, I don't need to fear, I don't need to any scary, I don't need to you know, jealous, I don't need to be anything. Just uh, look at them. How many understand what I'm talking about, yeah? Yeah? You cannot be any more fear. You know, there is a, there is a, what? There is a judgment, yeah? There is a punishment with fear. But perfect love dry out what? Fear. fear. I have the perfect love, agape love. Jesus met uh, all kinds of sinners, tax collectors, you know, prostitutes, all kinds of uh, you know, sinners. But Jesus uh, met with them with a perfect love. Perfect love drives out fear. Do you remember one lady, she's a prostitute, she committed sins. And then people surround her, they had, they had a stone, tried to kill her. But Jesus write down something on the on the on the on the floor, and Jesus say to them, "Anybody not committed the sins, turning her first. You know, when I meditated the scripture, if somebody not be honest, they they they, they kill her. They have sinned, but they you know they believe that they are sinners. You know, you can see them perfect love for that the sinner." kicking out the fear. Yeah? You know, therefore, when I see some dangerous people and then um, evil men I, I met, you know, I don't fear about them. I don't scare of them. I come to them, I approach them with the love of Jesus. Do you remember when, the, if you look at the Mark chapter uh, 5, in Mark chapter 5, almost, almost more than half of the chapter speak about the de demon possessed man. Bible didn't mention about this name. Where he live? In the cemetery. Cemetery. <coughs> Not just a bit, see, live in there. People, they chain and then bound them. Can you live in the cemetery? It's not a very good place. Mm -hmm. He's screaming, shouting. Do you know? Everybody thought, people thought, we wish this man died quickly. Why? Because disturbing the, that, that area. He's a crazy man, shouting in the middle of night. Can you imagine two o'clock in the morning, somebody shouting and you can hear, how do you feel? I wish that man died quickly. I wish this man gone somewhere. Do you know, people kicking out him from the society. This is not other than man, the demon possessed man. But Jesus came to him. Jesus came to him because what? He has got the perfect love. People they're scaring of him. They they just what they bound, chained. Jesus gone to him only for him. And then Jesus set him free from demonic power. His life completely changed. Nobody like him. Can you imagine? Nobody like him. Everybody hate him. But Jesus came to him and set him free. What was happening? This man, he went to Decapolis. Decapolis is 10 cities. Can you imagine? He became a great evangelist. He preached the gospel in 10 cities. Not just a small town, 10 cities. Great evangelist. He saw the potential. How many of you saw the potential in Sister Sami's life? Daniel, did you see the Sami's life's potential? <laughs> I think she flames everybody out. Really, but maybe. What I telling I you? Can I can I telling you, brother? I saw the potential in her life. Oh, and then life, I went there with uh, my wife and sister Sunny last night, and uh, we put the curtain. And a few days ago, we went to the uh, blind, blind there, blind there, and then we put in there. And then yesterday, we saw the 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 where the cover is very uh, 
dirty, and then <laughs> we remove it. She can't remove it by herself, actually. King size is very, very hard by herself. Mm -hmm. That is why she couldn't remove it. And I have the compassion. Can you imagine, she has got the power and strength to remove the bed cover by herself. Mm -hmm. Because there's a jeep in there. It's not possible. It's difficult. Difficult, by it's herself. Very, very frail. Yeah. Very frail. And then two, three people you lift up and then remove it. Do you understand? Most of people in this uh, certain area, oh, she's shouting and then, I know that. She's shouting and screaming F word. Yeah, it's terrible. Me in the street. Yeah, in the street. Hated and blinded. Yeah. And it smiled at her and walked off. Yeah. But can I say something? I love her. I love her means with the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. My wife, I might say we love her. And then she turned on the song. Some what kind of music? music. Oh, some yes. some oh, wo wo yeah. full ball with all the music. Uh, and then do you know what I told the sister? Yeah. I just right. encourage you. Can you turn on the Christian music? And then this day, do you know what kind of music? Way make miracle work, <laughs> promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, she's singing and dancing with a Christian song. People thought this is the crazy woman. <laughs> with but it's an atmosphere change. Yeah. And then I told her, I gave, you know, in her, her kitchen everywhere, there's a pool of leaflet. Mm. Wherever she goes, she gives the leaflet. But this is my heart. This society reject her. This soci society, you know, not very happy with her. But I myself love her. With my wife, with the sister Sonny. You went there, yeah? Sister, thank you, Lydia. You saw you hug with her and supporting for her. She had a dream. Sister Lydia had a dream uh, a few weeks ago about uh, Sister Sami. And do you know what happened? Sister Sami hungry in the dream. And she prepared the noodle. Very nice noodle. And poor. But do you know what happened? Young boys and girls come and eat all of them. People, they come eat the noodle. She made a noodle for Sami, but some other people they come eat. They stole it just for devil. Yeah, <laughs> stealing it. Yeah. yeah. And she made it again. Well done. And she eat? <laughs> no. Keep on praying. That's a message. Because you prepare the food for Sami, but some strangers, young boys, and they come eat. Plenty of said they steal, kill, destroy. Exactly. Do you understand? Do you know? share a dream that I had yeah, about yeah. I was with a sister because Lillian and I went to visit Sammy. Mm. Um, that was a I saw a few months, two months, month, yeah, two months, yeah, one month. Um, and I'd had a dream before, no, after that, uh, which showed that Sammy is very vulnerable. Mm. She's got extreme pain mm. in a very personal place which she hasn't shared with mm. anybody. Mm. And it, that was spoken to me in the dream and so that's what is holding her she, mm. she won't face it she won't speak about it but it's there mm. and um, you know when we come to looking at people that aren't saved we think of what Jesus did for us mm. he was patient he was yeah. kind he yeah. was loving yeah. we need to do all of that Amen. it doesn't matter how hard Amen. And Sammy's worth it you know yeah do you believe that she has got a potential? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or many potential. Powerful, powerful woman, yeah. yeah. Do you know, because of uh, this demon tormenting her, mm -hmm. her feet and her leg, she couldn't walk properly. Mm -hmm. And then, do you know, her ex, her ex boyfriend uh, beat into her hip and her he, he damage mm -hmm. on the right side. And then, you know, Sonny and Lydia, myself. In front of in front of me and then uh, this lady, she she show me is uh, uh, on the hip, is uh, almost naked, is very shame. <laughs> I told her, I'm a man, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, but she's got no boundaries. Yeah, she, she just she's all she out there, she just know? did uh, naturally. Yeah, yeah. no shame. Yeah. I told her, I'm a, I'm a not only person, I'm a man also. <laughs> I told her. But uh, she, you know, she had a uh, pain and broken uh, hip or that area. She's a vulnerable person. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, Brother Daniel, you saw that I met all kind of people, especially 
you know, you might say that I was m I'm much, much better than Sami, much better than somebody, but well, I'm telling you, I'm a... Decided to yeah. Yeah. Years, like anyone else in this room, you I'm see? sure our lives would have been dreadful. Yeah. Can you I'll imagine? Blame everybody else yeah. for your choices, basically. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know the D.L. Moody? Mm. Have you heard about D.L. Moody? In the nine, around 20th century, or well, over 100 years ago, yeah? D.L. Moody, D.L. Moody was a revivalist in America. D.L. Moody is a shoemaker. He's a not educated man, but he's preaching very powerful. But when D.L. Moody, he he was a, he, because of a God use of D.L. Moody, yeah, the revival coming all over America. Even he came to Cambridge University also in England. D.L. Moody one day he finished the he finished the big conference. Down and down people saved. And then after the conference, he's on the way to the hotel. Do you know, he's just working corner of the hotel and go back to the hotel, and he saw the drunker. When he saw the drunker, the drunker fell on the floor of Burmity, on the floor. For Diel Moody, he just finished the conference. He had a full of the Holy Spirit. Do you know what he did? In America style, like this. How pity this boy. This young man is a drunker. I am the one to full of the Holy Spirit. I just finished the message. I am on the way to the hotel. Holy Spirit spoke to D.L. Moody. I read his testimony book. Holy Spirit spoke to D.L. Moody. Moody, what is different between you and this drunker? Moody say, I'm much, much you know, spiritually higher and then better than this guy. You know what the Holy Spirit said to him? Between you and him, not very different. Only one thing different. You have a Jesus, he has got the Jesus. That's different. Only one thing. I'm telling you, if you don't have a Jesus, you are, you are not very different. Like uh, Sami or some even Adolf Hitler. Most the worst place in where? Most terrible place in, in our life is where? In our heart. In our heart. The Bible say, most terrible place, wicked place, is in our heart. Do you know that? Mm. Can you imagine my hobby? Anybody knows my hobby? Preaching the gospel. Long time <laughs> so. Now is preaching the gospel. Oh. I used to do. I used to when I was non-Christian. What was my hobby? Anybody knows? Beating people. Beating people. Yeah. Can you imagine beating the people is evil, isn't it? Mm. I was evil police. When I was beating the people, I was in joy. How evil. Somebody begging me, please, please. I beat and beat and beat. I was a non-Christian. But when I become a born again, I become a pastor, I become a missionary. When I came to UK, I preached together with some other pastor. Do you know these gangsters and the drug dealer, drug addict, when they angry with the gospel, when angry with me and my friend, guess who? they beat whom? Me or my friend? Only me. I beaten by these gangsters uh, in UK for 15 years. Now uh, I think these people they don't beat me in these days. They spit on my face, they shouting f word, wh whatever. I understand, but uh, they don't beat me. You know, when these people beat me, I don't think about why they don't beat my friend, only me. Do you know? You beat people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you what goes around comes <laughs> around. <laughs> I fail, I fail, I receive the consequence of my sin. Can you imagine? Yeah. I used to beat the people. And then they beat me, and then, do you know, in same condition, my friend Lee and myself, they don't beat my friend, only me. Why? They should do beat it together, <laughs> you know, equally, half and half, <laughs> but they don't beat in my friend, only me. While they beat me, I think about, oh, I received the consequence of my sin. I used to beat the people when I was non-Christian, but now these people, they beat me. I think my consequences are finished now, and they, people, they don't beat me anymore. <laughs> only, only shouting when they <laughs> spit on my face, <laughs> and, oh, it's a terrible it's thing. You know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I had a terrible persecution. People who knows me, they made a rumor. Do you know what kind of rumor made in? 
if you want to die, if you want to die quickly, please be with the best person. <laughs> you can get the chance to die quickly. <laughs> they made a rumor in London. <laughs> it's very strange <laughs> because of terrible persecution. So many. But these days, uh, I thank God, it's not very much persecution. And then uh, praise God for that. <coughs> and then um, I think conclusion. We're going to read for me conclusion. Can you see it? Page number three. Four. Yeah. Okay, I can. If you are interested in missions or becoming a missionary, please speak it with one of your church leaders. I know they love to speak with you about how you can be a more faithful witness for Christ or they can help you in the participating in local outreach activity. Our church offers a church service for the local nursing home. We invite the prisoners in the state and local area and we help the poor and once a year or beginning of the school year. We we supporting for all the, the prisoners and then, you know, for example, when I was working in the Brixton prison, I received so many letters from prisoners, so many letters. And your church probably has some form of outreach or mission, and if it, if not, and why not suggest one or even start one? You and I must be on one mission. We can join others in going into all the world to make disciples of all nations. But the thing is, going into the all the world start with our next door neighbor. Yeah. If you're not going next door to share Christ, it is not likely <coughs> he send us into the world. If we are faithful in little now, he will entrust us with much more. Later it is may my, my hope and prayer that someday you will hear the Master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little, and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your Master. Matthew 25 verse 21. Can you join the, some mission you know, team? Even this year, you, uh, this month, we'll go to Stoke and Throne, 24 to 26. I believe that God will you know, do greater things. And uh, can you share the good news for your neighbor first? Neighbor, neighbor. The, uh, your neighbor is a Christian? <coughs> your no, I live in a block with a whole lot of residents. So yeah. um, there might be one Christian. Two other Christians, but otherwise they all. Oh, no, can you pray for them? Share the goodness of Lord Jesus. Yeah. yeah, it's very important. <coughs> okay, there are simple three point outline you may have heard many times how you can get involved in missions pray, give, and go. It's most easy to pray actually <laughs> because of, uh, you can just pray. Give is, of course, practically you can give. Go, you are the one to go. Let look at the, these uh, three and see how you can personally uh, get involved in each one to help the missionary effort. Pray. Not everyone is called to go to the mission field. Not everyone is uh, capable of giving to missionary work. But all of us are capable of praying for missionaries and their work on the field. Yeah. How many of you pray for me? Did you pray for me, a uh, missionary? Yeah. I pray for you. I pray for your children, your grandchildren. I pray for uh, your family also. Yeah? Pray. Pray is very essential. Number one, meet missionaries. When you, your church has a missionary come to present their work, get to know them, learn about their family and their ministry. Unless the missionary has to rush off to another meeting and most are willing to stand around and talk along after the church service is over. Ask them how you can pay, pray for them in the coming week. It is encouraging to them to know someone is praying for their immediate, uh, immediate need. Missionaries usually give a general prayer request during their presentation. Write those down and then pray for them. Volunteer your home uh, if the pastor is looking for a family to host the missionary while they are at your church. Be conscient, uh, conscientious to the need to rest of the missionary, but also know that the missionary loves to talk about the work God, and ha God has uh, called him or her or two. The more you can glean from the missionary's visit, the more you will be able to pray for them 
in the future. Pray for each other is very important and ask the missionaries need. Do you know the Pastor Steve uh, a few weeks ago he came to our church to share. He, he came from his English guy. He finished his mission journey in, in, in Jamaica. Do you remember him? And he, he, has got the, he has got the five children, <laughs> but he has got the car. Uh, one guy in our church came to me, Pastor Paul, what do you think I can buy the car for them? I think it's a wonderful idea. Do it. <laughs> do, you, do you understand? Do you buy them car for missionary. Do you know, seven seat mi 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 uh, small car, a mi mi mini bus, a mi mini car. I mean, the family car, actually, in the bless. It's wonderful. Do you understand? Therefore, when the missionary come, you can support him for each other. And bless one another. Do you know the, uh, your, your dad passed away last uh, like one and a half month, something like that? Yeah. And I was, in the, I was in Plymouth. I was in Plymouth, I was preaching the gospel. And the Korean pastor, he never met your dad. He never met you. But he saw that you know, I was conducting the funeral service. Uh, and then he gave me 200 pounds. To support yeah. your mommy, yeah. and then somebody came to me. She, somebody gave me fifty pound, and then I sent it to you. Yeah. Do you know? Sir? Do you know these people? Uh, they never know your daddy, but they heard about it through me. How your daddy loves Jesus and follows Jesus. Therefore, uh, we pray for one another. We can bless one another. Amen. Prayer letters. Many churches post missionary prayer letters on a bulletin board. In these days, I think, through the text message <laughs> through the internet. Take some time to read the letter and write down the request the missionaries have. While we know uh, churches say they pray for us, it is always a trial to get an email or letter from the church member who says they are praying for one of our requests. When visiting churches, we get great encouragement when a church member comes to us and let us know they have been praying about the situation we mentioned in a letter. Many missionaries will have a sign up from either at their display table or their website for their mailing list. This is a great way to help you stay in touch with the missionary and their prayer need. <coughs> have you uh, have you heard about the teen challenge? Yeah? A few a few months ago, I think one and a half month ago, teen challenge two, two months ago, teen challenge came to our church, and thank God, all, many of our congregation give the you know direct debit to supporting for teen challenge. I was so encouraged, you know, they willing to supporting for them um, then financially. Number three, prayer card. Who gonna need for me the prayer card? Use <coughs> missionary prayer cards to help you remember and pray for missionaries. You can keep a card about the prayer cards that you pray for. You can see missionary cards each day and pray for them. You can also start the personal prayer calendar where you list a few of the missionaries to pray for each day of the month. If the missionary prayer, prayer card has the family birthday, <coughs> then you can add those to your calendar and spend a few extra minutes in your prayer for them on their special day. If there are new missionaries, this may be the first time they've had to celebrate their birthday without close friends or family around them. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, prayer card is very effective. But these days, uh, if you make it a prayer card, a magnetic prayer card is very powerful. Mm -hmm. They can put on the fridge and there's some metal and then they can pray for you guys. I think almost 25 years ago, I made uh, my prayer card by magnetic. And I made around 1,000 I gave to all of my friends and family. And praise God. <coughs> and number four, we're going to read for me, number four. Your church probably has a missions program you can get involved in to support missionaries. If it is not obvious, sorry, if it is not obvious, ask your pastor how you can designate specific funds to the church mission program. By designating your given, your given to missions to your church, we'll make sure your money is used in that way. If you would like to make some, uh, if you would like to make an extra gift to a specific missionary, ask your pastor how you should do that. Thank you. <coughs> you know, sometimes, two times, uh, some of our members came to me, and uh, what do you think is I can give the tithe for this missionary? Do you know what is my answer? Do you know tithe is uh, mainly local church. Ten percent of your income plus your, you know, where you belonging. 
and then you can spend another ten percent to support for missionary. You can do it, and then uh, you know, unfortunately, in these days, uh, most of people, especially anybody in the church, they don't understand uh, about the tithe. Tithe and offering is very, very important. You know, you can do it more than tithe actually. You can do it in tithe and offering. Um, uh, I know uh, Brother Sebastian. I think very soon we we gonna have uh, some special service to ordain you as a minister in the church, and then do you know how your church you need to pay the land? Yeah, how much is it per hour? Uh, Thirty-five. Oh, it's quite expensive. Hour. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours do you see? Four hours. Yeah. So minimum one hundred fifty pound per per yeah. per week. Yeah. yeah. For how many weeks? Is it like the weeks, four four months. weeks for six hundred or seven hundred pound, yeah? Roughly, yeah. yeah. Five hundred yeah. Do you know if all the congress not pay the tithe and offering, who gonna pay for five hundred pound? You. <laughs> Do you know what uh, can I give can I give you some testimony? I was working very hard in Brixton area. As you you know on the Untireless uh, power. <laughs> God gave the device to and I working very hard. Unfortunately, all the congregation don't, I mean, not all, the, most of the congregation, they don't pay the title offering in Brixton area. And uh, we hiring the school hall, it's very expensive. Do you know, for, for 10 years later, I had a full of debt. Do you know how much I had debt? Whenever the school was well, hiding the hall, this uh, company, they sent him the letter, never the Paul song, call at the time, Brookshire Full Gospel Church. The rent I need to pay. Do you know how I pay? I used uh, my credit card <laughs> to pay. And I had uh, 60,000 pounds of debt because of uh, the land. Can you imagine missionary came to UK and then congregation don't pay the tight and opening. I have the full of debt. And I prayed to the Lord. I came to UK as a missionary, now I have the full of debt. I, I don't want to live in UK, I want to go back to my home. I want to go back to Korea. God rebuked me. Because of money you want to run away from your calling. When God rebuked me, do you know what I say? If you are in my position, how do you feel? <laughs> I don't complain, just, I just express my heart. And then, by the grace of God, I think it's a you know, I managed to pay off all the debt. But, uh, you know, in the church, uh, the I not, have you seen that I, I, I didn't preach in the uh, old congregation, pay the tithe and offering, I'm not often, because of, uh, of course it's important to teach and then they encourage the people. And then when people, they understand the tithe, uh, 10 percent of the income. Actually, 100 percent of everything belong to God. Do you know that? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Thank you, Brother Weekly. He, he, he gave something. I using it. I put the offering back, actually. And then, well done, Brother. And then, that faithfully, he, he just gave. And then, I bless the church. You know, we pay the beers, and then water beer, gas beer, electric beer, and land, all these things. If all our congregation not supporting to pay together, who who is a responsible person, practically? Well, we are. I'm practically. I mean, he's a responsible. But my my, I'm the. But we. You are the one. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. It was our so struggle, a long time struggle. That is why I don't want to see this happen in your in your life, special brother, uh, Sabasha, because of now your new ministry now, you know, within you know a few months now. <laughs> two, three months after your body is sick and now you are the one to take over. And then um, I don't want to see a uh, struggle financially. Do you know, um, I saw the newspaper in South Korea, you know, when people divorce, there's a 70 percent of, of men reason why they divorce because of finance. Finance. Do you know money is very important? Do you know that? Have you heard about the money speak? What does mean money speak? Money speak. Money talk. Money talk. Money talk. It does. What does it mean money talk? Can you explain? It opens the doors. Yeah. For so many things. Money talk means so effective. Mm. So effective. I didn't know somebody bought this one. 
is money, yeah? Money talk. I bought it over four, five years of this table. It's money talk, yeah? Do, do you understand? We need it. Yeah, we need the money, but we don't love the money. Don't misunderstand, we need the money. Yeah? We need the money. You know, we don't worship the money, we need the money. But don't misunderstand, uh, we pray for our, our branch pastor, uh, Pastor Sebastian. You know, even your wife told you, you can be a full-time minister, yeah? And you will see how God bless you. Financially, you know, why God allowed, uh, why God, why God speak to the, the one tribe, among the twelve tribe, one tribe, Levi tribe, yeah? priest tribe, they don't get any of their own, uh, own income. They don't have their own land. Why? The other tribes will contribute. Thank you very much. Eleven tribes yeah, of Israel contribute and supporting for Levi. Do you understand? Therefore, you know, if you guys are not supporting for, for ministry, even for me, you know, I, I'll be powerless. Thank you very much you supporting for me. Financially, spirit. I talk about the finance now. I talk about the money now. Yeah. Do you know that Jesus speak about the money more than kingdom of God? Do you know that? In heaven, uh, in the New Testament, Jesus speak about the money more than the kingdom of God. Why? Money is very, very powerful in this world. Well, we need, as a church, you need it yeah. to help the people. Yes, you yes. Can't, you, know, you can't help them with nothing. That's right, yeah. Thank you. So that's why it's so important. Thank you, yeah. You know, for me, you know, I live by faith. Even from this morning up to now, we turn on the heater. Why? Because it's quite cold today. Mm. You, you like this temperature now, yeah? Mm. But outside, uh, when you go outside, it will be uncomfortable. <laughs> Just to let you know. Mm. It's money. Mm. It's money. You know, I think a few months ago, we turned on the heater, yeah, automatically. So hot! In the same time, what you did? Turn on the air condition. Mm. So hot! And then turn on the air condition. When God look at this situation, how, how, what can I say? Yeah. How foolish are you? You spend the money for heating, you spend the money for the air condition. <laughs> what wrong with you? You know, some Christian they live like that. You know, of course I repent. This is my fault. I repent of my sins. And then since that, you know, we don't do it automatically. We do it manually. If the weather is very cold, we turn on the heater. Otherwise, uh, we turn off. Do you understand? Therefore, when you live in this world, uh, if you check your bank statement, how your money go, how you spend your money, and I know who you are. You know. Yeah? Amen. If you spend your money for all the worldly things, alcohol, you know, cigarette, all the gambling, all kind of dirty things, all these things, I know you are uh, not born again. But if you are born again, mature man and woman of God, you can check your money, how the money go. Your money go for mission field. <coughs> early, I, early this morning, well, I send a, I send a 800 US dollar to Africa. Somebody came to me last night, here we are passed the phone, 800 US dollar. <laughs> they gave to me. Of course, English, English pound, and I sent, you know. Somebody saved the money many, many months for eight hundred dollar, and then to support it for somebody. They don't spend their money for themselves. They save it, save it, save it to do something for others. Look at the number five directly to the missionary. Most of the missionary work through some type of agency. It may be a uh, denominational organization or mission board or a uh, clearing house. Well, they may receive a fund through their home church. In any of these cases, you can make a tax deductible uh, donation to the missionary. Find out from the missionary the best way to get gift to them. While uh, monetary gift and easy to process, there are other types of gift you may consider. Don't try to surprise a missionary with a package on the field. <laughs> It can end up costing the missionary more money than it is worth. This, uh, do you understand what I mean? 
you know some people they send the big big heavy things but they'll collect a yeah, custom child is very expensive do you know what I mean especially in Africa they have to be careful this is of course uh, depend on the greatly on item you are sending and the field the missionary is in most the mission agency can receive a physical item as a gift on behalf of the missionary and give you a tax deductible receipt and you need to check with the agency to find out the best way to handle the gift it depends on the way the agency is instructed, uh, instructed uh, you may need to send the gift to them before it can be credited it is always best to, to check with the missionary and agency before sending a non-monetary gift to the missionary you know our missionary uh, from our church missionary linda nelson she's a missionary in kenya and then she opened the three churches and the schools and then you know what wow you know her her her, uh, her younger brother is working in the uh, dhl <laughs> because dhl you know almost a 10 percent of a price i almost free send a, a few hundred kilos of uh, all the, the cloth and shoes to to africa it's almost a free of charge then praise god Number six, go short-term trips. Trips. I think, I think, uh, brother Sebastian. One day, I think maybe not this time, or maybe March or one three days mission trip. I love to invite you to join, and then uh, if you if you possible, and then um, you can learn something. And then uh, uh, next uh, mission is uh, in March. Uh, I think somebody can you show me the calendar? Next March is. Uh, I can see the date now. Uh, because uh, always uh, last uh, Thursday to uh, uh, Saturday. Which date is it? Uh, the 26th. 26th, 25th. Uh, no, no, no. 24th, 25th. Yeah, 24th, yeah. 24th to 26th of March, uh, we'll go. I don't know where. Can you pray about uh, which area we can go? <laughs> because uh, in one month of the month, I was praying and praying, God, show me where to go. And then I, I decided to go somewhere. Anyway, this is a short term trip, which is also important. Visit the missionary on a field in a great way to get involved in missions. It will help you see how to pray for missionary and will give you a better understanding of the spiritual and physical need of the people, the missionary service. Talk with your pastor if you are interested in short term mission trip. How many? Uh, how may uh, interest in organizing a trip from the church and just need uh, someone who is uh, willing to be the first one to step forward he may already have a trip planned that you can be part of in any case he can uh, certainly point to you the right direction in getting information about the short-term trip and uh, many mission agency organize a trip each year that you your pastor may know about your pastor may know that one of your church missionaries welcome visitors. Most missionaries do if the visitor is uh, recommended by the supporting pastor. How many of you have been the short-term missionary trip that you did uh, last mm -hmm. month? Eh? It's one that is worthy, actually. I think, Daniel, you can, you can prepare sometime, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's, uh, money is no problem, brother. Mm -hmm. The no problem is uh, your faith. It's a massive problem. Yeah. 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 We can pray together, brother. Uh, I think it's a uh, when you stay in the church, you can save some money. Yeah, and then 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 pray to God, and you can you can visit uh, some some area uh, as a short term missionary, and you learn a lot of things actually. Never surprise a missionary on the field. Don't just show up asking what you can do. Your tree will be more effective for you spiritually and for the missionary physically if you make a plan together. The missionary will plan special activities you can be involved in during your time there. If you have been personal friend with a missionary for some time, ask them about you taking a, uh, talking, uh, also taking a trip to visit them. Find out how you can be blessing to them. You can put together an organized group with a specific recommendation from the missionary, or you can go alone and serve as an encouragement for a friend. 
Sometimes you will see things on the field you, un you wouldn't uh, understand. You will wonder why certain things uh, bother a missionary the way they do. Don't be judgmental or critical of the way a missionary handles a certain situation. This is very important. Yeah? You can underline if you have the pen. Don't be judgmental and critical. You know, easily to judgmental for a missionary. Oh, this mission, why do you like it like that? Don't do it. You know, if you're a short time mission journey and sometimes you damage the, the missionary as a ministry, why? Because you can do, you do whatever you like. No, you should respect the missionary. Yeah, you should respect the missionary. I know the one, one, one brother came here and then he, she pray very loudly. And then neighbor complain. I told him, brother, uh, you come here for a short time, but we, you, and you couldn't cry out in the middle of the night. And the neighbor complained, neighbor called the police. And then one o'clock in the morning, I received a text message from our neighbor, the, our neighbor. Because some crazy guy is shouting, screaming, in the, but for him, not screaming, and he pray. <laughs> but I, I sent a text message to that guy, please, brother, please, you can help me. You are a short time, you come here to go back to uh, your country. But for me, I live in here. Please uh, respect uh, our neighbor. I, I told you, if you want to scream and pray, go to the outside on the street and pray. Maybe police come and take you to mental hospital. <laughs> and then, do, do you understand? We have the respect. I told him many, many times, please be careful when you pray in the night time. It will reduce the volume. That is why we love to get the you know, Jesus community. <laughs> when you have to own our you know, land and own church, we can screaming is no problem. But at the moment, in here, <laughs> still, is a, we can get some complaint. <coughs> yeah. And certainly a missionary can be wrong in the way he does things. But this is a time to pray for them, not judge them. You can never fully understand what a missionary is experiencing as long as you are in possession of the return trip ticket. Yeah. So who gonna lead for me number seven, care of missions. Okay. Yeah, please, yeah. If you are interested in becoming a missionary full time, please speak with your pastor. Take time to prepare properly for begin becoming a missionary. This includes developing a personal daily relationship with God and His Word. Get counsel from your pastor. He will know where to direct you for further training and information. Work towards the specialized training you will need. This could be through a Bible college or liberal arts college or university. Missionaries can do many different types of ministry. Find out what type of training you need for the ministry you feel God has called you. Into. Thank you. Brother Samishan, you have a daily relationship with God and His Word. And especially you come here to training in the Bible College after the, your father training in here. And then I thanks be to God. God, God has the greater plan for you to training you. And then I believe he can be a very effective minister, minister uh, for the kingdom of the law. Mm -hmm. Number eight, yeah. Yeah, 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 please, yeah. As you begin to practice these areas of missionary involvement, read missionary biographies and mission board new newsletters. Both of these will give you a sense of the history of missions and what is happening in God's work today. Meet missionaries, pray for them, support their ministry financially. Where your money is, there will your heart be. Can you stop it? Where your money is, there will your heart be. <laughs> Do you understand? This is uh, what Jesus said in the book of Matthew. Yeah, I keep reading it. When you give to missions, you will be more likely to pray for them. Through that, God may end up calling you to His special work. Thank you. You can write down the, your name and then which day do you study this or what is the missionology? Yeah, yeah on, the, on your note. On the note. Yeah, on the note, yeah, because it is yours. You can keep it. And just to let you know, we're going to study continually next week about the uh, Apostle Paul's four missionary journey uh, next week, and then actually uh, we continue studying in there. And then can I encourage you uh, before we close, before we finish? Uh, you are a missionary, you know. I know who are born again Christian, live in London. They are a missionary automatically. 
therefore, you know, you have to live like a missionary. Live by faith and not by sight. And uh, we prepare as a missionary. Any question, any comment? Do you feel that you are missionary now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? Because of, uh, you can see the whole nation when you come out from your door. Mm -hmm. You can see the black, you can see the Spanish speakers, you can see the African speakers, you can see the Chinese, you know, English, everybody outside of your door. Therefore, our job, you know, uh, missionary job, and uh, keep on preaching the gospel. Yeah. Is a lot of Christians, the believers, um, became, um, sorry, um, uh, they became uh, uh, omitted from from the word. Yeah. They pulled themselves away instead of preaching. Yeah, yeah. I think on a daily basis there's always an opportunity to spread the gospel. Yeah. But it's without being obedient. Yeah. And yeah. at that present time, when God speaks to you, when you feel like God's speaking to you. Yeah. Is to be obedient. Yeah, amen. When you leave, mm. it, you know, the, we've got a fine tune to God's yeah, word. That's right, amen. Yeah. We're not obedient, it, it goes. Yes, yes. And, and we're, I, I guess all of us, sometimes we're guilty of that. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And yeah. We, we can't hide away from it. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Thank you. I agree, yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, you know, your daddy is a great uh, musician, played the guitar, and then he's a he has got the heart for souls, and then please, please uh, keep on preaching the gospel, not only inside the building, and then even outside, and then um, you can distribute the leaflet, <coughs> and keep doing it, you know. I always carry the 20, 30 leaflet in my pocket, you know, when I buy something, I give, I give the one leaflet, what is the, her name, who are working in Morrison today, from well, Russia? Russian, uh, Angelica. Angelica. And uh, she told me, you gave me before. And she said, <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> because uh, she said, oh, your church is in the corner in the near the station. And yes, we, she has got the time to come. And she came to Russia. And then, um, you know, we keep on preaching the gospel for anybody. You know, therefore never give up to preach the gospel. Yeah. I think in uh, all our churches, especially branch pastors, uh, they love to win the souls. If you don't win the soul daily, and your life is, uh, and your fam your church is not very strong, is ruined, is not uh, not stable. I know the one church, uh, Ansan Dongsan Church in South Korea, is a pastor Kim In Jung. I met him a few years ago before he retired. Now he's retired. I think he's 70 years old now. When I met him around 65. But he is still active minister. He told me while I have lunch together, his membership over 20,000 members, big church, mega church. He said that this year, it's either 2017 or 16, something like that. He said, this year, I'm winning the 245 people this year. And 245 people attend his church to the pastor. You know, if you're a pastor of a mega church, who are the ones to surround you? Elders, assistant pastors, deacons, so many Christians around you. It's very hard to meet a non-Christian if you're a pastor of a mega church. But he's willing to go to the street. He's willing to go to the, the non-Christian to share. I was very imp impressive. Can you imagine the pastor of a mega church? He say, this year, 245 people attend our church through me. I he said, praise God. Let me he evangelize on the street. Even his church is so big church, mega church. But he never give up. Oh, do you know if you do you know if some pastor is a very famous or well, mega church pastor, if they want to be uh, spiritually pure and then uh, spiritually healthy, yeah, they need to preach the gospel on the street. And then they don't commit a sin with a, you know, with a, you know, woman or money or power that area. 
you understand? Mm. Spiritually is uh, very protective if you preach the gospel daily base. Daily base. Not only once a month or daily you have to preach the gospel. Every day. That's good for you. How many want to preach the gospel daily? Amen. Yeah. Can you touch your heart? I can pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for my dear brothers and sisters. We love to share the gospel of Lord Jesus daily. Oh Lord, help us. And uh, we winning soul for Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. You have the fire of the Holy Spirit to winning the souls. Dear Heavenly Father, protect us and deliver us. And uh, we obey your word. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. And correct and training and teaching and encourage with a great patience. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Many souls come to Lord Jesus through our ministry. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give a cloud. Thank you for listening and watching. Thank you. God bless you.